It's okay, we're live. So, um, yeah, the um, sp spiritual journey, I mean, my, my own experience and, you know, really listening to Hawkins was really um, helpful because um, you can be hit, as you, as, you, as you embark on a spiritual path, you know, you do a lot of spiritual work and then you get to a new place you've never been before. Uh, and, and it can feel great for a while and then you can get hit by a truck and feel like you get hit by another truck. Uh, and that's quite normal uh, with spiritual work. It's, uh, it's a bit like you have tranches, uh, the word is karma, you have tranches of karma, which uh, you know, you're, you're releasing a certain huge pattern that's been held in, you know, I would say, and this is a, a gross oversimplification, but like, they're like, I would say like the ego is full of like karmic packages, which are, you could say, due to certain events or certain patterns held within, within the ego. So there can be, you know, you could be dealing with, I don't know, something to do with, uh, let's say, unfairness, unfairness at work. It could be a, like a huge karmic, so it could, this thing which could be associated with several collective events which have the same theme, which have then created like a huge watch. There's this karmic package of like a ton of repressed feelings and, and, and a few choice belief systems that are now like this kind of karmic package within the ego. So suddenly like it's like as you're doing spiritual work, it's like it hits you, bam, you know, this event hits you and there's an overwhelm of feelings and there's this pattern that's like, you know, like a knife and you're doing all this spiritual work and then you felt you get this huge sigh of relief, like, okay, I've forgiven, I've forgiven my horrible boss for being unfair, and uh, and then and the miracle happens, and it's all love again at work, and and you feel great, and then you think you're going to feel great forever, you know, and, uh, and, and you know, like I've, I've you know, I, I learnt about spirituality, I've done this, and and it was so difficult, and now I feel good. And this is going to, you know, so it's only going to, get it be, going, going to get better from here. That's not really the experience of most people who do spirituality. Most, it's like God gives you a bit of a breather for a while uh, because you've now got to, you've transcended this huge thing that was weighing you down, this big karma stone from your ego. You've done it and you're on a new level, but it's like, then it's like, you know, okay, you're now ready to, you know, this, this thing over here that's to do with, uh, your fear of spiders or whatever it is, or snakes, or whatever. We're going to like, you know, <laughs> this is be a, there's a lost snake in London, whatever it is. So, 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 you get triggered, or there's a big spider suddenly comes in the house, or, or whatever it is. And <laughs> I don't know where I'm coming up with these stories. But anyway. so, 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 suddenly you feel you feel like you've regressed. You feel like, well, you know, I did all this work, you know, I love my boss, and my boss even gave me some flowers, so, you know, it shouldn't, go, it shouldn't get bad, but you do, you get these other trials, but it doesn't mean you've gone down. You know, you have transcended that big stone of karma, but it's now like, you can suddenly feel like, you, feel, you can feel like you've gone down, but you haven't gone down. You know, even though you're now in negativity and fear, you know, there's this other thing that's triggering you, and you're going through the processing cycle. Your actual level of consciousness is actually higher, even though you're now feeling negative, because you're now letting go another stone of karma, if you like, and then you, you'll come back to a higher level than you were, even though it feels pretty bad and can feel pretty difficult. The only thing that takes you down in your level of consciousness is if you have a different intention to life. So if my intention is to get to release all the blocks to God, to the infinite God, and I've released this thing, my trouble with bosses. And then now, and let's say I've got now I'm getting trouble with romantic stuff. But if my intention is to, to spiritually work on that and totally transcend that, then my conscious level doing that is higher than it was before. And when I process that, I'll go to a higher level. Even though it feels like you go sort of up and down and you can feel like sometimes you go right down again. But as long as your intention and you're processing stuff, you are actually going higher. But you're just having these. So for anyone who's doing spiritual work, as long as you're your aim is to continue to let go and surrender and get a stronger connection to God. Even though it feels like you're going like a yo-yo, uh, you are actually going higher and higher. It's just that you have to understand when you release another package, it can be very stormy for a while. Uh, if you look at, I mean, Hawkins talks about the saints. If you look at the lives of a lot of the saints, I mean, you know, they're often in the pits of despair, you know, sort of moaning like, God, where have you gone? Or, you know, 
you know, I'm feeling great now, I feel bad again. So they're often like, you know, it's not necessarily, it's not a bed of roses, but they are still saints, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, the thing that helps me is that um, the idea of unconditional surrender to God uh, and that, you know, like the thing that helps me is like I have a commitment to enlightenment. So it's like, you know, this life is for enlightenment. So, uh, and I do this thing, which is I have unconditional surrender, which means that even if, you know, it's like, because I've had white light and near death spiritual experience, I've had a white light spiritual experience with meeting Muji. So these are like, it'd be fun if you were in a white light thing, you know, you wouldn't even be in this world any longer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but it's not, not that thing, because the ego would, would, you know, it's like, if you give your life, if I give my life to surrendering, even if the rest of, I trust that even if the rest of my life was miserable, I, it's hard to say it was a negative emotion, but if my intention is just to surrender, then I'm, I'm pretty confident my consciousness level will be good. It's just that I'm not experiencing. Now that, that is, I, don't, I don't know if this makes sense. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But it's like my intention in my heart, it's like sometimes there's karmic things which mean you don't always feel, mm -hmm. but you're still at a very high level of consciousness. But you're not, you're not, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're in total bliss every day. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, you, things come up, but you're still at that level of consciousness, but you still have, you know, you know, to see your personal karma and to understand collective karma and global karma is such a complicated thing that you couldn't, you couldn't comprehend it. So you just have to surrender that if your heart is with God and your intention is with God, it doesn't necessarily mean you're in sublime bliss. It doesn't mean you're not making progress if you're not in sub, sublime bliss every day. Or it doesn't mean even if you're feeling bad and you're doing spiritual work that you've gone down. You know, you're still, it, it can still actually mean you're going up. You know, if I suddenly decide to become a bank robber, you know, tomorrow, then you definitely my conscious level, you know, would, would go down. Because that's, that's like setting the intention of my, my life course. You know, your, what is your intention is a, it, and how much you processed, you could say, are the factors which would mean, you know, your, your level of consciousness. It doesn't necessarily mean, you, you know, like someone can temporarily feel happy, but doesn't mean that they're at an advanced level of consciousness. Yes. Whereas someone who's done a lot of spiritual work may temporarily feel bad for a while. It doesn't mean that they're lower than the one who's just suddenly feeling happy for a few, for, for a few hours. So that's the thing, yeah. Um, just have a question on the um, sort of karma, sort of the packages you were yes. discussing. Yes. Um, this has triggered um, sort of something in me and I'm just wond wondering um, what would you say to that is that um, out of everything I feel passionate about in life, my biggest trigger is injustice. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and I um, have been like that since I was a little girl when I didn't get into a dance group um, when I was 10 and the yeah. cleaner of the school cleaner found me crying at the back of the school and I still remember like it was five minutes ago, mm. 30 years later and I was going to prove to the world that I can so I opened the first dance group in my country, mm -hmm. you know, and suddenly it wasn't enough. I wanted to hurt that person, you know, who's done mm -hmm. that to me. I didn't want to do that to anybody else. And that I find that the biggest trigger for me. So when the situation at work happened, which was unjust and unfair, and they've admitted they are unjust and unfair, I just want something to happen in the world so everyone can see it. So not injustice can be done to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I went into that field kind of to protect the victims. And I just don't want to be triggered by that. I want to surrender it. Yes. I mean, for me, I, you know, because I pursue um, an enlightenment work, uh, I pursue transcending everything that my mm. ego is, 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 is being, uh, uh, what's the right word? In my, all the patterns that my ego identifies with and creates pain, uh, I see that those are all those opportunities for transcendence. Because I seek enlightenment, I want not to be uh, suffering from those patterns. Because when, it, when I suffer from them, it means that <coughs> it's held within the ego with identification. It's held as something. When you hold when you hold a belief system in the ego with identification, then you you notice it. You see, if you hold something within your ego without identification, then you hardly notice it. It doesn't hardly exist for you, or it doesn't exist for you. Like, um, but uh, when you hold something with identification and it's caused you pain, then you really notice it, and it stays like an obsession, mm. and yeah, and you feel you feel pain with it. So. It, so it's trans real, uh, now the thing with something like injustice, which is obviously going to touch a lot of people, uh, how how an how a 
how a um, event is perceived is based on its, your level of consciousness. You know, like at a certain level of consciousness, if you see injustice, they should be hanged. You know, they should be hanged and, and, should, uh, and, and they should be guillotined. You know, at a certain, so if you see it at that level, it's like inexcusable, they're the scum of the earth and they should be executed immediately. Mm -hmm. So as you do a bit more spiritual work, you start to see it through a different prism. You're praying for them, you're praying to God to, for a miracle, a shift in your perception. If you feel that anger and you sit with the anger of injustice and you feel it out, you start to get a more benign, it's like you, it's like you start to see the situation differently. You start to have different thoughts about what it means. Your contextualization of the event starts to change. Uh, and as you release more of it, you start to have much more loving or compassionate thoughts. Now your response to an event and the actions that you take towards an event will depend on your level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't done much spiritual work, you know, you may, you know, you may, I don't know, like throw a brick at them, you know, because that's what they deserve. But that, you know, if you haven't done any spiritual work, you may throw a brick at them. Another level, if you do a bit of processing work, um, you know, you may threaten them that you're going to sue them, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, and tell their mother about how bad they've been or something like that. So at another level of consciousness, you see that oh well, they probably had a bad childhood. Uh, you know, they mm -hmm. actually I think they're you know they can't stop eating donuts. Really, what I should be doing with them is taking them to a group where they can recover from their food addiction because I understand why they're behaving so badly, so you start to see it differently. See their innocence. You see, you start to see their innocence. So you do the Course mm -hmm. in Miracles, you start, well, that's, that, yeah, I see Christ in this person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, there's so. another lesson, there must be a different way of looking at this yes, situation. Yes, you're, pray, you're yeah. praying for a miracle to see it differently. Yeah. So you start to yeah. see it with divine eyes. At a certain level, if you get to enlightenment, you don't, you know, um, <clears throat> well, uh, the, the you that could be offended doesn't exist, and the yeah. them that you thought that they were doesn't exist. So it's, it's witnessed from a totally different level. You may not have hardly noticed, or yet some things, you know, that used to trigger, you don't even notice them. You're like, oh, I didn't, you know, like some, other people may notice it and you go, oh, well, I didn't notice anything. What exactly yeah. happened? You know, it's sort of like, because you start, you start to lose your fascination to get involved in certain things that used to, uh, that used to track, I call it, the ego tracks it, but when you let go of it, you don't track it very much. Like you stop tracking time, you stop tracking, uh, injustice, you stop tracking all kinds of things. You then become an instrument of the divine, but you don't really register things that mm -hmm. well. I was, I was reading exactly that and letting go this yes. morning. And Malkin saying that there's actually, and he used, he used the same analogy as the pressure cooker. Yes. It's the, the, the suppressed feelings about anger. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of as I said, as consciousness, I create that. Um, yes. A certain ang angry and um, such a situation yes. that allow me to actually um, let those relieve those 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 feelings yes. again. So uh, in a way, like you're saying, well, you, you, when you kind of transcend that and you stop tracking that, so you stop kind of creating those situations. Yes. But it says that it, it's all about the suppressed feelings about that and that this and that. And that. Uh, yeah, and it, it was really like oh, I was reading it. <laughs> but that's correct, you know, like if you're holding a lot of repressed feelings with the belief system, mm -hmm. if, you don't, if you don't release the valve, it'll start to create that thing again. You'll face it again. Like, you know, if I, mm -hmm. if I think, uh, you know, every job I go, I'm a victim of my boss, you know, if I, you know, if I, if I leave those repressed feelings in there, that belief system in there intact and don't do any work on it, yeah. it will eventually manifest <laughs> me going to another company yeah. and then oh yeah. he's victimizing me again yeah. mm -hmm. so yeah. that's why if I release all those repressed feelings now mm -hmm. and take out the belief system do the forgiveness work and, and transcend it mm -hmm. like Decker totally talks about yeah. going to yeah. the pain like I go exactly to the same mm. childhood yeah. memory in the body yeah. of the victimization or of whatever mm -hmm. happened that is linked to that mm -hmm. and I'm just yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. So it's good to, to do, I mean, you know, that's why it's great to do spiritual work. And if you're having, mm. if you're having really bad days, you know, this is the thing, like, uh, you know, when I have bad days, I th 
for me it's less about taking action, it's more about feeling the feelings or doing the observer or forgiving. Because all that comes up in my life, I sort of see is a reflection of what's still within my ego. Mm. So, like if I just go and tell the person stop treating me that way or whatever, I, I see that as less, less long-term useful. I might, I might do it, but I think, you know, the deeper thing is to do the inner work because I think that that's going to be far more valuable. I mean, sometimes you have to, like, speak to people or say, or whatever, but, but uh, you know, I see that the value is doing the, the deeper work in transcending it. Uh, yep, we're on camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, so... Um, all right, so...